Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com for November 6, 2007. Well, Tuesday has come to a close, and it's a little after 5 o'clock here on the East Coast. And we just want to go over again some of the interesting moves today in this market and touch on a few of the interesting facets of what happened today in the gold area, the oil area, the overall market, the indexes, and so forth. And there was some interesting happenings today. And just like we've seen almost every day going back as much as a week or two now, we continue to see the 3 o'clock, the late afternoon rally. And these rallies are very powerful. Uh, someone or something is continuing to push this market up in the late day. It doesn't seem to matter whether or not the market's gapped down early, negative early, it doesn't matter. Or whether or not it's positive, it doesn't matter. All I can tell you is that again today, around 3 o'clock, from 3 to 4, we saw a powerful push in this market. Now let's get right into the charts here, and I'm going to start off doing the different charts today. And here's the chart of the intraday Dow. And as we can see here, note the early gap up here, and then the sell-off. And this I'll, I'll show you what it coincided with, and it's very, very interesting. Uh, but notice how we sold off here right into about 11 o'clock, right before 11, and then we started to find a little base here. We rallied or bounced, we consolidated, we bounced up, bounced back down, retested, and then we started to rally. And we rallied slowly all afternoon to about 2 o'clock. 2 p.m. here on the East Coast. And then what we saw is another consolidation period of sideways trading. And then again, a little after 3 o'clock, we saw this massive move up. And here you can see what happened. You see this, this angle. This is pretty much the steepest angle for consecutive almost an hour that we've seen in a while, or at least all day today. And here you can see the, nat the Dow was up 117.5 points, a little less than 1%. Now, we're going to go on to the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ, again, as we've always been saying, has been leading the upside. All right, these stocks like Baidu, Google, Research in Motion, Apple, these have been the kings in tech. And these large cap tech continue to have lots of money flow. And again, you can see the gap up here, the sell off, the small bounce, and then the hard sell off. And this sell off basically took us down here a little bit to the point where the NASDAQ was negative. And it looked like maybe the NASDAQ was going to go negative today. And this coincided, and I'll show you the chart in a minute here. But this coincided with a hard sell-off in Baidu, B-I-D-U. And we know from experience over the last few videos that Baidu has been consistently one of the main stocks to run and keep the tech sector running. Not only is it a Chinese play, which and the Chinese market's been very hot, obviously, over the last few months, but it's also a major tech player like Google. And in my opinion, even though Kramer changed the four horsemen to three horsemen, I basically put Baidu back in here to make it four horsemen again, substituting for Amazon. And uh, what again you saw in the NASDAQ, look at this late day buy, buy program in the NASDAQ. This is a very steep buy program. You basically saw the NASDAQ gain close to 30 to 20, 20 to 30 points here in this late buy program. And again, we basically went from maybe up five right around here on the NASDAQ to up 30 by the end of the day. Moving on. Here's the, the five day, and this is the five day, so you're looking not at one day anymore, but I want to show the bigger picture to give us all an idea of what's been going on, the five day S&P. And here you can see we were trading up here, we gapped down, and we showed this yesterday on the Dow, I believe. But then again today, here's today, we retested this low here, we filled this gap. Keep in mind, you always want to fill those gaps. You fill those gaps, and you got to feel confident that you're going to have a move up after you fill that gap. And that's exactly what we ha happened here. And I just want to point back to the day on November 5th, Monday, and notice this, all right? We basically had this move up here, but we never filled this gap. Look at this gap here on the gap down. And then what happened late in the day? We spiked up, and look at that, filling the gap right there to this point, and then we could sell off. So usually once you fill a gap, you see a reversal back down, okay? And that's exactly what we saw here. We filled the gap, but then you went the opposite way. You always go the opposite way of the gap. So if you have to push up to fill the gap, you fill the gap, you sell off, and vice versa here. And we see here, once we filled the gap to the downside, then we rallied back up. Okay, moving on here. Here's the daily chart of the uh, Dow. And we see the Dow being a lot weaker than the NASDAQ. Uh, it's just the way it's been. The Dow and the S&P have been much weaker, and I've been pointing that out. And what we can see here is a little sell-off here. This was the big sell-off here, the rally, 
the sell-off the other day for about 360 points, and now we're consolidating. Yes, we pushed up here on today, but we didn't get above the 50 moving average, which is the blue line right here. And that's going to be a key note to watch and continue to watch. Okay? If we get above that, then we're going to have the 20 moving average right here to test, and that'll be more resistance. On the downside, should we break the low here, the double bottom low, note the double bottom, from this point here to this point here, these two points, should we break that, close below, then you look for a sell-off to the 200 moving average. Here's the MACD and the stochastic, and I'm not going to go too much into detail there. The S&P, same thing basically for the S&P except for one factor, and the S&P closed above its 50 moving average today. So now we can possibly look for another move up to around the 20 moving average right here at about 1530-ish, give or take a couple points. Okay? Should we close back below, then we see we could see another sell-off back to this double bottom area. Should we break that, then the 200 moving average is just a little bit below, and we'll watch for a test of that. Okay? On the upside, should we get above that 20, then we could go back to the top here, and should we break that, then we're going to a double top up here. Okay. Moving on to Baidu. Now, Baidu, I told everyone, was basically the result here of the initial selling in the NASDAQ. Baidu pre-market on Google's upgrade was trading upwards of $430 plus. All right, it was up tremendously pre-market. It's been a huge runner. And just look at this chart just over here. Basically had it from $325 here to $425. And this is in a matter of seven business days, ten business days, whatever the amount of days this is on the daily. And you just see a remarkable move up in Baidu. Well, today it was gapped up again. And I'm going to show you the, day, the day, intraday here. And here's the gap up right near 4.30. In pre-market, it was trading even higher. And then all of a sudden, come a little after 10 o'clock, there was a steep sell-off in Baidu. And this, this coincided with the sell-off in the NASDAQ. Once this started to sell off, you saw Chinese stocks get crushed. All right, Overall Chinese stocks like RCH, uh, XFML, uh, little Chinese stocks really took it on the chin here initially early and Baidu took it really hard here dropping basically 30 points 40 points within a matter of 20 minutes and that's a big drop even for a $400 stock and what happened here well basically it regained its footing down here and was able to consolidate move up here rally sell off back down and then rally back into the close only ending down nine dollars which is a part of the reason why the, the Nasdaq was able to regain footing in my opinion now what we're looking for here is, is indicators, and the indicators are going to be as follows. Should Baidu continue to sell off and Google, Apple, and Research in Motion start to sell off? That's what I worry about in the NASDAQ. If you see that start to happen, watch out on the downside for the NASDAQ. Okay, looking at the XLF, this is the financial sector spiders, and uh, basically an ETF here for the financial sector, and you can see how much it's been pummeled of late. You know, you have you had Google down big, Citigroup down big yesterday, um, and today Google uh, on Goldman Sachs, excuse me, Goldman Sachs down big, and uh, Citigroup down big, along with a lot of the other financial players. But today we did get a bounce on that, and you can see after a steep sell-off, you're going to have an initial reaction bounce, and that's what we got today. Now, very ugly stochastics in MACD, there's no doubt about that. But the question is, you're going to have a technical bounce, and that's what we're seeing today, and we'll see if it continues tomorrow. The USO, well, oil was up another 250 or so today, folks, just under 97. I think it hit 97 intraday, and oil has just been unbelievable. At this point, folks, you have to look at it as it's got to touch that 100 mark. i got to believe it gets close to that. I even think it breaks 100 at some point, intraday at least, but then once it breaks 100, I do think it has to sell off. We are extremely overbought on oil, but that doesn't mean it's not going higher, so keep that in mind. Markets, commodities, things like that can remain overbought for a long period of time, but once it does correct, once it starts to fall, you will see a pretty steep fall in it. Money, that all the money that's flown in will flow out very quickly, and it could easily come back and test this 20. And we talked about the market needing to test the 20 in past videos a week or two, three weeks ago, before we had this initial fall last week in the markets or the last couple weeks, and that's what oil will have to do eventually. However, I do think that the USO will have to go up a little higher here, to retest to test that hundred mark on the oil price, um, not on the USO, mind you. The USO does not correlate exactly with oil, so keep that in mind. But the oil price will have to go up, probably touch a hundred dollars, maybe a little over a hundred, to get some amateur longs on board once it breaks a hundred. And then once those amateurs are on, it's going to go the opposite way and fall. And that's always how things work, folks. The second you you think that all the amateurs have jumped on board, chances are the market has topped in that sector or that commodity. Okay. 
So be aware of that. Try not to get caught off guard. Uh, there's no way I could, I could personally, and again, I speak from my opinion. This is just my opinion. Always consult your financial advisor at all times before doing anything. Never go on what I say. Um, but in my opinion, I would not be going long oil here either. You're just too, too high to go long, but too, too stupid to go short. You know what I'm saying? It's just too stupid to go short at this point. Uh, you got to wait for the candles and the technicals to tell you to go short before you can. The OIH. Now, this is interesting. The OIH is the services, the services holders. Okay, now, this should you, normally you'd think this coincides with oil because as oil moves up, these plays should move up. But we are seeing this lagging here. And this is showing that, that the cost of oil now is becoming a hazard to some of these companies. All right, and therefore, it's not exactly, it does not look like the USO chart, even though it does relate to oil. Lastly, the gold chart, again, just a monster move in, in gold. Tremendous. Everyone, come join the Swing Trade Alerts. Come join the chat room. It's wonderful. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.